Hey everyone, uh, I'm here on Edibit. I'm going to solve some coding problems. Uh, if you'd like to, head over to Edibit and you can solve these with me or try them on your own. So let's get started. I'm just going to start with the easy ones and we're just going to go down the page until I get tired. Alright, so here's the first one. Return the sum of two numbers. Create a function that takes two numbers as arguments and return their sum. Okay, so in this case it looks like an addition function. So let's go to the code function addition a comma b takes in two numbers a and b so first off I don't like calling them a and b let's call them first num and second num always be descriptive when you are writing your code right so then we wanna say we could return first num plus second num or we could say const result equals first num plus second num and then we're gonna do return result. I like that just a little bit better. Uh, I think it's just more clear. Oops, not save, no, no, uh, check. There we go, that was loud, let's turn that down. All right, on we go, continue. All right, correct the mistakes, fix the code in the code tab to pass the challenge. All right, looks like we're squaring numbers. First off, let's spell squared correctly. It takes in B, or it takes in, not B, a number, and we're gonna say result equals number times number, and return result. Okay, so if you square a number, you take it and multiply it by itself, and then we're going to return that result. And my internet's a little bit slow, so just bear with me. There we go. Yes, submit final. Oh, that made a fun noise. Very easy. Just keep right on going. Next. I don't know why this site is so slow. Okay. Convert hours into seconds. Write a function that converts hours into seconds. How many seconds? Two. What? Hours into seconds. Two hours is 7,200 seconds. There we go. Ten hours is... Thir I don't like the name of that function. So not how many seconds, let's call it convert hours to seconds. That's a little more clear, I think. It takes in hours, and there are, if we do the math right, let's see, there's 60 seconds in a minute, and there's 60 seconds in an hour. Wow, 60 minutes in an hour. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. Sorry, I'm getting tired. Uh, so 60 times 60 is 3,600. So there's 3,600 seconds in every hour so we want to return let's say uh, total seconds equals hours times we know there's 3600 seconds in every hour and that's really hard to see that's a very yellow number but it does say 3600 and then we're going to return the total seconds check Oh, we failed. Oh, it wants us to call the function how many seconds. There we go. How many seconds. I don't like it, but fine, whatever. Check it again. All right, so note to self, we got to keep these functions the same. Submit. Go team. Very easy. Next challenge. Is the lamp on? Your job is to find out whether the lamp is on or off. Check the test tabs to find out what you have to do to make this work. The test tabs. Okay. Lamp status. What, what test tabs? What? The tests tab. Um, 
I'm looking. Oh, here we go. All right, so. All right, so this is, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Lamp equals, if the string is off. Oh, it's asserting lamp equals. Oh, wait a second. So it just should be true, the lamp is on, right? False, the lamp is off, I think. So the question is, find out if it's on or off. Okay. If lamp equals off, then oops, oops. If lamp triple equals off, return false, else return true. And a lot of the like the jet the ES lint linter will tell you to leave off that else. I like it for clarity, so stick it ES lint return true. Um which would mean the lamp is on. I don't know if that's right or not. Oh it is. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to say, hey, if the lamp is off, return false. If the lamp is on, return true. Um again ES lint would like you to leave off that else because it's extra. But in my case, I think it adds clarity. Cool. Okay, that one was, oh, you know what, that one was easy. That one, you had to do a little bit of thinking to understand what the question was, right? Let's do one more. Equality check. Uh, in this challenge, you must verify the equality of two different given parameters. Both the value and type need to be tested. Okay, so a check equality function, sure. Takes in A and B, uh, or item one and item two, let's call them that. Item one and item two. They could be strings, they could be numbers, we don't, I guess we don't know. Um, so we need to do if, now to strictly check something, right? If item one, and we're gonna say triple equals item Oops, we called that item one. Getting tired. Item two. If item one triple equals item two, then we're gonna return true because they are strictly equal. Uh, the triple equal sign compares the types as well as the actual values. Um, else return false. Or uh, you could get rid of the else and just say return false because um, if it's not true, it'll return false. But again, I like the else for readability. Hopefully that's what they're looking for. Perfect. Submit. And I think we'll do one more. I know I said that on the last one, but I think I've got to solve in these. So here we go. Thank you, next. Thank you, next. Let's go, internet. Let's go. There we go. Find the index. Create a function that searches for the index of a given item in an array. If the item is present, it should return the index. Otherwise, it should return negative one. So we're making a, <sighs> excuse me, yawn. Making a search function, it looks like. So if it's there, return a function that searches, yeah. The index, if it's not, return the item. Search array item, okay. This one I haven't really thought about in a little while. Hmm. Could probably do a for each, right? Array. Let's try that. Or a map's not really what I'm looking for. Could do a set. No. Array dot for each. For each array. The thing is, it's uh, everything in the array is an item, right? Um. Let's look at the question again. Find the index of the item for each. Uh, for each array item. That's too close to item. I don't like it. For each thing. We'll just call it a thing. Uh, 
array dot so we're gonna go through each item in the array for each thing and there's an index also and we need if there's two things we need to wrap them in parentheses thing index for each thing and index of the thing if thing the thing in the array triple equals the item that we're passing in then we want to return the index or return the index of that thing so if thing equals item return the index of that thing um, else I would say else continue but it's a for loop right so if thing equals item excuse me return index yawn um if let's say also we want to do found equals false okay and this is this is not just one thing so it's return index and above that though found would equal true so found true return index um, and then after the for each loop, right? Uh, if if found, so if found was true, um, well, it's going to return the index in the in the for loop, and that would end it. So if not found with the the bang operator, the exclamation point, if not found, return negative one. Okay, oops, I don't know why I keep trying to save that. Cancel. Let's check it. So if it finds it, found is true, return the index. I, I guess found doesn't even need to be to change there, really. So I guess we don't need any of this. I overcomplicated it after thinking about it. So if it doesn't return the index, right, in the end, we just want it to return negative 1. If it returns this index, it'll stop. That's the end. That's the end of the function. Um, it, if it doesn't return an index, it's going to return negative 1. So here we go. Check. Uh-oh. Expected to instead got negative one hmm let's do this troubleshoot console dot log array console whoop hello console dot log item now I know this isn't gonna pass but we want to see what the arrays are Excuse me. In this case, the item is eight. It looks like, and no. Hmm. Oh, here we go. The item is three, uh, and the array is one, two, three, four. Expected two. So it expected the index to be two there. Um, let's do this. Console dot log index. Check. Uh, not save there. Check. Okay, so the index of this was to 0, 1, 2, right? We logged the index, which was 2. And we return the index, which should also be 2. Instead, got negative 1. Maybe I did need it the other way. Hmm. Okay, let's do it this way. So we have. Let's not do return index. Let's let's make a thing up here. 
let's make it a const index equals and we don't know what it is so let's set it to negative one for now um if the thing equals the the item then we're gonna say index we can't use index twice um search uh, result index we'll call it result index equals negative one if thing equals triple equals item then the result index equals the index of the item and if it never finds it the result index just stays at negative one and then we can do return result index and that'll work so we should be able to check this failed assignment oh uh because we're assigning something to this result index so we need to do let uh can't use const there i don't know why i keep trying to save it like that all right so let result index equal negative one because it'll change right we're reassigning it here so we have to use let not const and there we go so let's let's run over this one again for me and for you um takes in an array and an item and we set a result index to negative one for each thing in the array and index if the thing triple equals the item that was passed in then we're going to set this result index up here equal to the index of that thing that was equal to the item and then we're going to return that new result index and if this if nothing in the array equals the item then this result index just stays negative one and that's what gets returned down here great so we'll submit that and i think we're going to call it right. so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it if you like solving coding challenges with me please like subscribe thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video